Hey guys, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to cover the sideroblastic anemia. So, sideroblastic anemia is just another cause of microcytic hypochromic anemia. And if you haven't watched my previous videos in which I covered all the causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia, do watch that video because I have already explained the pathogenesis of microcytic hypochromic anemias in those videos. Now, in this video, we'll primarily focus on what what are the sideroblastic anemias and uh, what are the causes of sideroblastic anemias. Now, as you already know that in case of microcytic anemias, the basic pathophysiology is that there is a reduction in the concentration or in the production of hemoglobin, which may occur as a result of decreased production of heme or decreased production of globin. And you know that the decreased production of heme can occur because of decreased iron and it can also occur because of decreased protoporphyrin. Now, with this much in your mind, I'll tell you what happens in case of sideroblastic anemia. So, actually, in case of sideroblastic anemia, what happens over there is that the production of protoporphyrin is decreased. So, the production of protoporphyrin is reduced. So, as a result of decreased production of protoporphyrin, there will be decreased production of heme and there will be decreased production of hemoglobin, which will lead to microcytic hypochromic anemia. Now, before we take on what are the causes of decreased production of protoporphyrin, I'll tell you how this protoporphyrin is made. Now, what happens over there in the developing RBCs is that there are two molecules. One is succinyl coenzyme A, that is succinyl coenzyme A, and other one is glycine. Now, this succinyl coenzyme A and the glycine, they are acted upon by an enzyme and which converts these molecules into what is called as aminoluvulinic acid, that is aminoluvulinic acid. I'll write that as ALA. Now, the enzyme which acts so as to form the aminoluvulinic acid is called as the ALAS enzyme, that is the aminoluvulinic acid synthase. Now, this aminoluvulinic acid synthase, uh, aminoluvulinic acid is acted upon by another enzyme which is called as aminoluvulinic acid dehydrogenase, which converts aminoluvulinic acid into another molecule which is called as porphobilinogen. So, there is another molecule which is called as the porphobilinogen. Now, over the porphobilinogen, there occur various steps of reaction and ultimately from porphobilinogen we have the formation of protoporphyrin and finally it is acted upon by an enzyme which is called as ferrocalitase and it unites the protoporphyrin with iron and as a result of this heme is formed which ultimately binds with globin to form hemoglobin. Now in case of uh, sideroblastic anemias, what happened over there is that there may occur problem at any step in this chain and as a result of this the ultimate thing is that we have decreased production of protoporphyrin and as a result of this we have decreased production of heme, decreased production of hemoglobin and microcytic anemias. Now what are the causes of sideroblastic anemia? See the causes of sideroblastic anemias they can be congenital or they can be acquired. Now, among the congenital causes, the most common cause is that there can be a congenital deficiency of enzyme which is called as ALAS or aminoluvulinic acid synthase. So, there may be a congenital deficiency of the ALAS enzyme and as a result of this, there will occur decreased production of protoporphyrin and ultimately all the downstream pathology. Now, in case of acquired causes, we have lead poisoning. Now, as a result of lead poisoning, what happens over there is that the enzymes like allard and the enzymes like ferrocalitase, they are inhibited and as a result of this, ultimately what will, ha what will happen is that the protoporphyrin will be decreased. Another cause is that there can be B6 deficiency. Now, what happens over there is that this enzyme, alas, it requires a cofactor which is vitamin B6 and as a result of vitamin B6 deficiency, the pathway will not take place. Now, the vitamin B6 deficiency is associated with isoniazid treatment. 
Now, isoniazid is a particular drug which is used for tuberculosis and as a result of the isoniazid intake, there will be vitamin B6 deficiency which can lead to sideroblastic anemia. The third cause is alcoholism. Because alcohol is a direct mitochondrial toxin and all this pathway is taking place in the mitochondria, as a result of this, there can be a decreased production of protoporphyrin leading to the sideroblastic anemias. Now, next we have to understand what are the findings in case of sideroblastic anemia and why it is called as sideroblastic anemia. Now, what happens over there is that, let's suppose we are looking at the bone marrow. Now, in the bone marrow, what happens over there is that, let's say these are the RBCs, precursor cell, that is, therefore, they will be nucleated because, you know, the precursor cells, they have nucleus, but the adult cells, they lack the nucleus. Now, what will happen over there is that, the iron will come to bind with protoporphyrin in the mitochondria. So, there will be numerous mitochondria which will be filled with iron because the iron had come to bind with protoporphyrin. But in this case, that is in the case of sideroblastic anemia, as you know, there is no protoporphyrin. Therefore, the iron will not be able to bind with protoporphyrin and form heme. As a result of this, these mitochondria, they will be laden with iron. So, there will be iron all around in the mitochondria because it is not being utilized. And what will happen is that these mitochondria, they will form a ring around. They will form a ring around the nucleus of the precursor RBCs or the developing RBCs. And as a result of this, these cells, they are called as sideroblast. Now, this word sidro is derived from iron. And blast means they are the pre, pre, uh, they are the precursor cells or they are the premature cells. So therefore, since in this anemia, if we look at the bone marrow, we can find these cells that is the sideroblast. Therefore, the anemia is called as sideroblastic anemia. So this is the first finding which will which you will find in case of bone marrow. Now, if we look at the PBF. On the PBF, you will have microcytic hypochromic anemia like you used to have in case of iron deficiency anemia. This is because of decreased production of hemoglobin. Another thing which can be seen in this case is that the RBCs, they will have these basophilic stiplings. Now, what are these basophilic stiplings? Actually, what happens over there is that the RBCs, they contain some residual amount of RNA which is destroyed as the RBCs, they enter into the peripheral circulation. But in this case, the residual RNA is not destroyed. Therefore, the residual RNA will give a bluish tinge when, look, uh, when it is looked at in the PBF. And these are called as the basophilic stippling. So, if someone asks you, what, is, what are the basophilic stipplings due to? So, you have to ask that, you have to say that these basophilic stipplings are due to the RNA molecules which have not been destroyed. And this happens in case of uh, lead poisoning and in case of sideroblastic anemias. Now, what are the other findings? The other findings are the iron studies. So, we have also to do iron studies in this case and I'll make them super easier for you. Now, as I already told you that in this case, the protoporphyrin is not being formed. Therefore, the iron is not being utilized. So, what will be the serum iron? Obviously, the serum iron will be increased because the iron is not being utilized. So, therefore, the serum iron will be increased. Now, what about the ferritin? Now, since the serum iron is increased, therefore, the storage iron will also be increased. So, therefore, the ferritin will also be increased. Now, what about the TIBC? As I already told you that the ferritin and the TIBC, they hold an inverse relationship. Meaning, if ferritin is increased by, another, by a reason, the TIBC will be decreased. So, therefore, TIBC will be decreased. Now, what about percentage saturation? Now, look. Total iron binding capacity, that is the transferrin molecules which are available, they are decreased, but the serum iron, it is increased. So, therefore, naturally, the saturation will be increased 
and also the free erythrocyte protoporphyrin will be decreased. So these are the basic findings which are found in case of sideroblastic anemia and this is all about this video and the sideroblastic anemias. If you find uh, watching my videos helpful then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and also share it among your friends.